Hi everyone, this is Mix from Snakes and Balpi H, and today we have the full performance review on the Adidas Dame 8. Before we get started, if you do like the video, please do make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Then if you have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below as well. Then also make sure to leave a link to the SNBPH Negrounders Facebook group in the description box. So I do hope you can join us over there because that is a place where we talk about sneakers and basketball quite a bit. And it's also where we have the SNBPH Steel Cabinet where I as well as many of our other members put up some shoes that they no longer use and put them up for bidding at way below market value. Then if you haven't already, please do make sure to sub to the channel because it really does help us out quite a lot. Then with that being said, after multiple weeks of testing, we now have the full performance review on the Adidas Dame 8. The Dame signature line from Adidas is definitely one of the most consistent signature shoes, at least in terms of basketball. Because I mean, for the most part, aside from like the Dame 1 or the traction on the Dame 6, all of Dame's basketball shoes have been anywhere from pretty good to really good. This was definitely the case with the Dame 7 last year because a lot of people really liked that shoe and it was even good enough to crack our top 5 of the best basketball shoes for 2020. Given the stellar track record of the Dame signature line in general as well as the Dame 7 last year, the Dame 8 definitely had a lot to live up to and a lot to prove but I was definitely excited to test these out. So after playing with these on multiple different courts, we finally reached a verdict and I must say the Dame 8 definitely doesn't disappoint. So to see how good the Dame 8 is on court and for you to figure out if the Dame 8 is the best basketball shoe for you, let's start off with the traction. The traction on the Dame 8 does make use of a full length solid rubber outsole with a wave bone pattern from the forefoot to the heel and a sort of lightning bolt pattern on the outskirts or the edges of the outsole. With that said, it means that most of the traction and the grip is coming from that wave bone and wave bone has been used by Adidas for a really long time. I mean, I think as far back as when they started making basketball shoes, they already had this pattern. And just like it's more pointy and jagged and somewhat more popular brother, the herringbone pattern, it just really is a tried and true traction, so you really can't go wrong. The wave bone pattern on the Dame 8 definitely sticks to the court really well. And especially when you're on a clean court, this is definitely one of the hardest biting tractions you can get right now. The only issue you might run into though is that the grooves of wave bone are a bit flat, so dust pickup could be an issue if you're playing on super dusty courts, but all you have to do is keep it clean every now and then by wiping. Also with regard to how the traction bites on dusty cards, it's not like you will slip out or anything, but it just doesn't bite quite as hard. Then lastly for the durability of the outsole, I did use these quite a bit and they don't really show any signs of fraying or any signs of ripping, so they are adequately durable but do keep in mind that I mostly played indoors in these and if you were to play in these primarily outside, they'll definitely wear down a lot quicker. So overall for the traction, given that it bites the court really well and has above average durability, I'm gonna give the traction an A. Then moving on to the cushion, like I said in my initial review, this is the biggest change from the Dame 7 to the Dame 8 because for the past two shoes in the Dame line, we had Dice Strike and with the Dame 8, we have their all new Bounce Pro. The Dame 8 does actually make use of a dual density cushion setup with the Bounce Pro being purple and the sort of normal or OG Bounce being the one in yellow. The Bounce Pro cushion on the Dame 8 is definitely pretty bouncy and pretty soft and you can definitely feel that here in the heel because it is pretty thick but it does thin out quite a bit here in the forefoot so initially when I got it, the forefoot kind of felt it. Once I did start testing these though, the Bounce Pro and the forefoot did get a little bit more comfortable and you can definitely feel it more and more the more that you broke it in. Overall though, I really enjoyed my time with the cushion on the Dame 8 because even if I did enjoy the light strike on the Dame 6 and the Dame 7, I really didn't mind the change the Bounce Pro on the Dame 8. You have quite a lot of impact detection on the shoe, a good amount of bounciness and plushness here at the heel, and in the forefoot you still do have some of that softness and some of that bounce back but it's a lot more responsive and low to the ground. All of those things are what I think makes this cushion setup very versatile 
because even though Dame is a guard and this probably looks like a really good guard shoe, which it is, it actually isn't just for guards. I think this would also be good for wings and even some big men because it does have a lot of impact protection, which is surprising given how low profile it is in the forefoot. So overall for the cushion, I'm gonna have to give it an A. Then moving on to the materials, the Dame 8 does have an all textile upper with some softer and more breathable mesh here at the forefoot and the tongue and some more structured and rigid textile here at the midfoot and heel. This is definitely a case of having materials that aren't the most premium but definitely get the job done. You have some good airflow and breathability here at the tongue and forefoot. And here in the forefoot, it is kind of similar to the Dame 7 because the more you use it, the softer it gets and the more that it moves well and fits well on your foot. The more structured textile here at the midfoot and heel are definitely useful in terms of the support. And they also contribute to the overall durability of this upper. Speaking of the durability, you do have a bit of fuse on the shoe. You have it here on the midfoot. You have it here on the eye stay area. And you also have a big patch of fuse on each side of the forefoot. So overall for the cushion, Aside from maybe the lack of premium touches, there really isn't much to complain about in regard to the materials on the shoe. So with that being said, we give the materials on the Dame 8 and the Dame. Then moving on to the support, the Dame 8 definitely has all of the support features you need and I never really had any issues when I was playing in the shoe. To start off, you do have a pretty nice and wide base. I mean, it isn't as wide as the Dame 7, but I never really had any issues because in my opinion, it still is adequately wide. You also do have torsional support here at the midfoot with a torsional bar inside, a pretty stiff and rigid internal heel counter to keep your heel from sliding in and out of the footbed. And for some additional lateral support, you do sit in the midsole and you have that stiffer textile here at the midfoot, which really helps you on those side-to-side -side movements. The only nitpick in terms of the support that I guess you can have is that the base isn't as wide as previous name shoes, but in the grand scheme of things, it is still pretty wide and pretty stable, and it's also assisted by a lot of the other features like that stiffer midfoot part, that denser foam that acts like a bit of a sidewall, and that internal heel counter. So overall for the support, I'm gonna have to give the Dame 8 an A. Then moving on to fit and sizing, I did go through the size with the Dame 8, and it fit me pretty well. It definitely isn't a perfect fit because for me personally, the width was right on the money, but there was a bit of extra length and a little bit of extra room here at the toe. It was just a little bit awkward for me because, you know, I was fine with the width, but the length kind of made me wonder if I could have gone down half a size. But looking back, I think that going with my true size was the best decision because it would have been a little too narrow going to a 9.5. So in the end, that's still what I would recommend especially if you don't have a narrow foot. If you do have a narrow foot though, I think you can go down half a size so you can fill up that toe part. The good thing though about the fit in lockdown is that even though you have that extra length, the lockdown is pretty good so you don't really notice it and you don't really slide in the shoe. The lacing system is pretty basic at least here on the outside, but there are some small touches that really help with the lockdown, such as the lace loop here at the base of the tongue, and this additional loop here at the middle of the tongue that's slightly higher up. And you also have this pretty interesting feature where there's this sort of cutout with this flap, and this sort of acts to hold the shoelace here at the top eyelet and keep it from loosening when you're moving around. So overall for the fit and lockdown, my only real issue would be that extra length. However, I wasn't really bothered by it, especially when I started playing because the lockdown is really good. So overall for fit and lockdown, I'm gonna have to give the Adidas Dame 8 a B+. Then moving on to the overall aesthetics, the Dame 8 has definitely grown on me the more I've worn it and the more that I've played in them. And especially with some of the newer colorways that are coming out, I think the shoe in terms of its overall aesthetic is definitely looking up. This fourth quarter KO colorway that I got is definitely a bit jarring because it has a weird yellow to it which will turn off some people for sure. But you have the black and white colorway as well as that white and red colorway that's really clean. And I think those would be more in line with the aesthetic tastes of most people. I like that two-tone scheme though and I think they've been maximizing it with the color base that they've got and I think it's just really clean how they split up the colors but in this particular colorway I just you know kind of wish that the colors were slightly different. It definitely has more of a hoop shoe vibe and is more adequate for wearing on court but I do think with that white and red colorway that I saw on the Adidas side you can actually wear that like casually and I think it will look pretty dope. So for the overall aesthetics I think these have grown on me quite a bit and with the new colorways that are coming out that look really dope I'm gonna have to give the overall aesthetics on the Dame 8 an A. Then moving on to the price, the Dame 8 does retail for 6,000 pesos here in the Philippines or 120 US dollars. I'm definitely happy that it still is in that sort of budget signature shoe range because there was a time when these were the same price as the Kairis, but the Kairis definitely have spiked up in price over the past few years. 
which leaves the Dame Lion to compete more with the likes of PG, Donovan Mitchell, and Trey Young. Historically speaking as well, the Dame Lion does get pretty discounted in certain colorways. You'll probably be able to find this on sale pretty soon. Overall for the price, I think that the Dame 8 is a stellar option. The great overall performance that you get for only 120 is definitely an easy sell, and all of my complaints on the shoe are pretty minor and basically just nitpicks. So overall for the price, I'm gonna have to give the Dame 8 an A+. So there you have it guys, that was my full performance review on the Adidas Dame 8. It definitely had some high expectations to live up to with the Dame 7 being so good, but I do think the Dame 8 delivered in the clutch. So once again, if you do like the video, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. And if you haven't already yet, please do make sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon for notifications. And as always, whether you're looking for that retail win or you want to get traded to my Philadelphia 76ers, wink wink, just keep on hunting.